Training other people can teach you a lot. And if there's one thing I've learned from coaching others, it's that training, performance, and fitness are extremely personal. Two people can respond to the same workout and diet plan in entirely different ways. This comes down to preferences, to limb lengths, to hormones, but it goes even deeper than that. Even your very personality can impact your performance, the way you're programmed, your temperament and disposition, who you are. There are direct and obvious ways this can be the case. For example, people who are more extroverted tend to have more muscle mass and better fitness. This is because many activities that improve fitness are also likely to involve socializing, spending time with others, and being very active. But here's another way in which extroverts and introverts differ, in reaction speed. On average, extroverts have faster reflexes than introverts. People often misunderstand the distinction between introverts and extroverts. Introverts are not necessarily shy, nor are all extroverts confident. The difference lies in how individuals orient their attention and where they feel most recharged. I, for example, am extremely introverted, according to the popular Myers-Briggs personality test anyway. I'm an INFP, in fact, for anyone who's interested. When I tell people this, though, they often don't believe me. That's because I'm quite outgoing in a group and I talk a lot. I'm not shy. But I also am happiest when I'm at home on my own or with my very close family. Reading, writing, playing computer games. Even most of my chosen fitness activities are solitary. Weightlifting, calisthenics, rock climbing, running. I like martial arts best when I'm performing it solo. And it takes me a lot of willpower to actually go out and spend time with people. I enjoy it when I'm there and I genuinely like people. But it is an effort for me. Unlike a friend of mine who says he's so extroverted, he gets lonely in the shower. As an introvert, I spend more time in my own head, and that could explain why someone like me would respond a little slower to external stimuli. Interestingly though, it also seems the case that introverts actually make fewer errors when reacting. A little more processing occurs prior to the response, and this also allows for fewer mistakes. So there isn't one clearly superior type of personality here. And it's easy to see how this could also influence things like verbal fluency and social interactions. Another interesting delineation is the warrior versus worrier discussion. So this is a category of personality that's actually dictated by genetics. Specifically, we're looking at the gene that codes for COMT, catecholomethyltransferase. This is an enzyme that breaks down the catecholamine neurotransmitters, such as norepinephrine, epinephrine, and dopamine. In other words, some people will have genetically higher levels of adrenaline and dopamine flowing around their system at any given time, while others will have lower levels. The warriors being those with higher levels and the warriors being those with lower levels. Of course, you can also be a hybrid with the levels that fall somewhere in the middle. During everyday activities, higher levels of dopamine can actually result in more brain activity and this can provide a slight cognitive edge in some scenarios. But the problem is that during times of high stress, this can actually become too much for the warrior type. It's at this point that the warrior type tends to step in and outperform the warrior. As you might expect, this makes the warrior type slightly more suited to certain types of competition. For example, most MMA fighters are warrior types. If you want to find out which type you are, you can use a genetic test. There's lots of good ones out there, but I recommend Self-Decode, which I've been using for years and which provides a really wide amount of information on a number of different health and fitness related topics. I'll leave a link to that below and if you use it, I'll also get a commission, so thank you for that in advance. You just need to send a saliva sample or you can download and reuse your DNA data from a site like Ancestry. But if you'd rather not spend the money, you can likely reflect on your own personality and make an educated guess. Are you in your own head a lot? Do you have racing thoughts? Do you get easily flustered when under stress? I'm so that way inclined that I tend to forget my own name when making appointments. So yes, I'm definitely the worrier type. Or are you seldom worried and good at performing under pressure? In which case, you might be a warrior. The good news is that once again, there are pros to both kinds of performance and ways to maximize your natural potential. According to one study, fighter pilots with the warrior genotype tended to perform better on practical test scenarios. 
Predictably, the worriers would be distracted by their own anxiety. But when given sufficient time to acclimatize to the stressful situation, worriers actually began to perform better. And there are ways that worrier types can mitigate their higher levels of stress too. For example, they can use meditation or CBT to maintain a calm state of mind. After all, the stress response only occurs if the individual interprets the situation as stressful. So for these reasons, some writers actually refer to the two types as the warrior type and the strategist, as this suggests less negative connotations for the latter. Likewise, the warrior type might be able to overcome some of the more negative traits associated with their less wired mentality by using strategies to amp themselves up, or even by using caffeine. If you're looking for a way to manage your own cognitive state, using an app like today's sponsor Endel can be a fantastic option. Endel is an app that creates personalized, science-backed soundscapes designed to help you focus, drift off to sleep, increase productivity, and more depending on your goals. This app uses patented technology to adapt in real time to a host of different inputs, including the weather and even your heart rate, if you have a compatible device. It works with your circadian rhythms and has been shown to boost productivity significantly compared with strategies like listening to playlists. Endel also features special soundscapes from well-known artists, such as James Blake, Grimes and Alan Watts, among others. It's accompanied by cool visualizations and has a stunning design, all of which certainly helps to put me in a focused state of mind. I love working in coffee shops and letting Endel provide the vibes. The first 100 people to download Endel at the link down below will get a free week of audio experiences. Here's some more bad news for the strategist types though. They also typically have higher sensitivity to pain. In particular, the reduced enzyme activity associated with the COMT VAL158 MET SNP has been linked with chronic back pain in studies. Although strategists are no more likely to experience things like disc herniation in the first place, for example, they do recover more slowly and experience more chronic pain going forwards. And that about tracks. But to put a win back in the strategist column, higher levels of adrenaline actually mean that blood reaches the muscles more quickly when needed. We're more ready to go. This also rings true for me as someone who's been known to walk into the gym and head straight over to perform a near max bench press. There are many other factors that also play a role. For example, estrogen actually slows down COMT, meaning that women will naturally have higher baseline dopamine levels on average. So too do men with lower levels of testosterone. There are no doubt countless other interactions between various other hormones, genes, neurotransmitters, and lifestyle factors, so it's not a clear-cut correlation. And of course, we've only discussed a couple of different personality traits here. This is a growing field of study, and one with a lot of promise. Charles Poliquin, for example, was a fan of using the Braverman test to learn about his athletes and to help guide his coaching. This psychometric test attempts to create a neurotransmitter profile based on answers to a number of questions. There isn't a huge body of evidence backing up its accuracy, but it's certainly an interesting attempt to take into account more neurotransmitters, such as GABA and acetylcholine. Acetylcholine being the primary excitatory neurotransmitter that's also responsible for muscle fiber recruitment across the neuromuscular junction. Thus, it might illuminate an interesting link between temperament and physical strength. This is also why alpha-GPC can be an effective pre-workout for some people. I've also spoken before about the roles of DHEA and neuropeptide Y and the ways that they can buffer the effects of cortisol on the prefrontal cortex. High levels of these chemicals are identified in top athletes and special forces personnel. These top performers also seem to exhibit both heightened sympathetic arousal during stress and heightened parasympathetic expression during recovery. In other words, they get amped up to a high degree during the times when they need to, but they're also able to recover very effectively in between those bouts of high performance. Even your preferred chronotype or body clock might be an important consideration, as it can affect what time you perform best. Are you a dolphin, a lion, a wolf, or a bear? And what might your role once have been among small groups of humans as a result? The bottom line is that humans are far too complex to say that type A will perform like X. And don't get me started on the actual type A theory which was actually invented to counteract bad press for cigarette companies. 
What we can say is that your personality, disposition and biochemistry each have a huge role in defining who you are and how you perform. Learning to better know yourself can be a highly effective way to get more from your training. I hope you found this video useful and interesting guys. Let me know a bit about yourselves in the comments down below. What's your Myers-Briggs type? Do you relate more with the warrior types or the strategists? Extroverts or introverts? And did you get your DNA tested? Did you find out anything interesting about yourself? As a reminder, you can find a link to Self Decode down in the description. And a huge thank you once again to Paul and Louise for letting me use their gym and turn off all the lights. It's a fantastic place to train with amazing coaching. So if you happen to be local, then I highly recommend getting in touch. And guys, you can find this full script as an article over on my blog. And there you'll also find links to all of the studies that I referenced or that back up my points in this video. Whatever type of person you are, I'm really glad you're here. So thank you so much for watching this one, guys. And bye for now.